the author of Stay Sane in an Insane World, How to Control the Controllables and Thrive. And I've heard of the guy who wrote the forward. His name is Tom Brady. Uh, the author and longtime Michigan athletic counselor, Greg Harden, here on The Rich Eisen Show. Good to see you. Good Greg. to see you, young man. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I mean, um, you know, you and I were talking back there, and, um, you know, last time I guess we crossed paths was when I was there, by the way, it's seven years ago. Seven yes, seven ago, years ago, sir, when I was you honorary were captain. honorary captain. When, when Harbaugh asked me to do that, I, you know, I was bowled, bowled over, blown away, because when I first showed up on campus in 1986, Jim was – was the senior quarterback, you know, saying we're going to go win the Rose Bowl and probably pissing Bo off, <laughs> you know, and he was my first quarterback really at Michigan. So for him to be the coach and say, hey, do you want to be the honorary captain? I was I was blown away. That yeah, was great. Yeah, but that was a special day. And uh, as a matter of fact, I've got rumors about that day. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, in fact, I heard that you did a stand-up comedy routine Yeah. for the uh, – Team. Well, now that wasn't on that day. That, that was, was at the day Rose Bowl day. Um, against Texas. Out here. Out here. Oh my God. Yeah, where that Lloyd Carr asked me. 2004 or five. That's or exactly when it was. Come on, man. And I met and I met Bo before the game. It was Bo just before he passed. Oh, was that that? But man. yes, I did stand. It might have been the last time I ever attempted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but as you know, I can't really say no to a Michigan football coach, and that's what Lloyd asked me to do. And I'm like, you really want me to do it? And he said, yep. So I did it. Oh, my gosh. It's funny. You're uh, Obviously, you've got a sharp brain. That's for darn sure. Greg Harden is here on The Rich Eisen Show. We're talking about his new book. Back here on The Rich Eisen Show, Roku Channel live stream, along with what we're talking about on the radio. The author of Stay Sane in an Insane World, How to Control the Controllables and Thrive. Greg Harden here on the Rich Eisen Show, and I say go blue to you, sir, to kick things off. Go blue. How did you wind up on the campus of the University of Michigan? Uh, I was minding my own business, mm -hmm. uh, working as a clinical therapist at a hospital called Byer Memorial Hospital in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Right down the road. and Washington uh, County. Yes, sir. Yes. And I got a call from a, a physician asking me if I would come and do a, uh, a speech on alcohol and drugs mm -hmm. for the team. And I said, oh, thank you for calling, but no, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. So why is that? And I shared with him that uh, you're asking me to do a 20, 40-minute rah-rah, we love you, just say no speech mm -hmm. to the team so you can mark a box. I said, I don't, that doesn't work, and I don't do it. He says, yeah, but it's Michigan. Said, yeah, I love Michigan, <laughs> but it's Michigan football. I love Michigan football, but no, thank you. I appreciate it. I can give you the names of some people who might be eager and willing. No one says no to Michigan football. Mm -hmm. So he goes back and shares with his uh, boss. His boss happens to be Shim Beckler. And Shim Beckler <laughs> says, who is this guy? I want to meet him. Well, I'm young and dumb at the time. And I said, hell, I want to meet him. <laughs> and I got 21 questions for him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because if you're talking about... Uh, preventing and, and, and dealing with the issue of alcohol and drugs, mm -hmm. uh, then the speech, here's a hand. This is the whole program. This is the speech. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you can't tell me what would happen if a kid raised his hand after this fantastic speech and said, oh, my God, I need help, what would happen? So I'll be coming in to ask you, and not only do I want to have Schiff Beckler there, I don't know at time, Rich, I set up a kangaroo court for myself and mm -hmm. said, not only do I want Shem Beckler there, mm -hmm. I want the head trainer, I want the sport administrator, I want the medical team, I want everyone there that has to make a decision yes. about what would happen to this kid if he were to raise his hand. I said, all right, I'll walk in and you of course, I have this brother from Detroit in there, of course, about eight of the oldest white men you ever saw in your life. <laughs> Sitting in this room in Ann Arbor. Right, and the guy introduced me and he says, my God, Greg Harden, this is Shem Beckler. Shem Beckler, this is the guy I was telling you about. And Shem Beckler looks at me and says, go. That's what he says. Uh -huh. uh, Mm -hmm. But that's I, no. I came to ask you questions. 
He says, tell me about your program. Mm -hmm. Well, needless to say, I had to tell him about what I would do mm -hmm. if I were in his shoes. And did he hire you in, in that meeting, or did you agree to be hired in that meeting? Well, or? after I got through sharing with him how I would approach it, mm -hmm. and of course I was eager and enthusiastic, and I said, I need six sessions, and then he laughed. <laughs> and he says, I'll give you three. With the, you'll give me three sessions? With the player you're with talking the, about? With all the players. With all of them. And I get to break them up into smaller groups instead of talking to 140 people about this is what a drug, you know. Mm -hmm. I said, we'll break it down. We'll break them into units and we'll separate. But each one will get at least three sessions to look at the impact on the individual, mm -hmm. on the community, and on the team. And is that where you met Jim Harbaugh for the first time? That's the first time I ever met Jim Harbaugh. Okay. Jim Harbaugh, I think, was a senior. It was 1986. That was a freshman on campus. He was a senior quarterback. What was your psychological evaluation of Jim Harbaugh from first I meeting him, Greg? He was a unique individual, especially when he announced clearly and distinctly what was going to happen at the Ohio State game. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, and, and that's when, you know, it was pretty clear to me that his confidence was not an issue. There was... <laughs> No, I know. And then uh, I just remember on my on my on my tenure there on campus, it it basically started with um, you know the Harbaugh quarterback team and ended with Bo's final season. Did he reach out to you in his final season to talk about uh, his retirement process, or were you wait, just as surprised as anybody? You were a journalist. I was working for the Daily. I was. <laughs> I was. I covered Bo's final season, and I remember the Ohio State week. He was more chill than any of the previous weeks, and a bunch of the reporters who were, you know, hard bitten reporters who covered the team were wondering something's like, what's going on? Because he was really he he wanted to have story time before the Ohio State week. I remember he pulled everyone aside away from the the uh, the the lunch table at the at Weber's Inn, which is where he would always have his media sessions. Mm -hmm. And he, he held it like right near a fireplace, sitting in a chair, and just everybody sit around. And he just wanted to tell stories. And he, you know, they beat Ohio State, and then he announced he was retiring. Man. Did, did that surprise you too, or did he reach out to you during well, that I process? Mean, at that Greg? point, I was just fascinated by being connected right. to uh, Michigan football. Right. And, uh, but uh, Jim, uh, Jim was just a guy that you were just fascinated with, mm -hmm. and he was a huge personality. And uh, but he he was focused like a laser beam mm -hmm. on the task at hand. Well, he still is. It seems he right? still is. Greg Harden here uh, on the Rich Eisen show. Desmond Howard loves you, Greg. I mean, you know that. Um, I try to get him to call in to surprise you during this interview, and he's he was shooting a commercial because he's Desmond Howard. He's probably in the Heisman <laughs> house right now. Is that your guest, Chris? Is where that he would is be right my now? best guest, Heisman um, house. So yeah. um, he loves you. He called you the secret sauce. <laughs> As you know, that's the famous phrase that you are. And, and again, Tom Brady wrote the forward for this book. You've also helped counsel Michigan athletes named Charles Woodson and um, Michael Phelps. Um, so what is the through line that you have found between these four athletes, just in, in particular, that are this audience might be very obviously very familiar with their work and might be unfamiliar with your work with them? Well, right? uh, in the book that I wrote, uh, we tell stories. Mm -hmm. And uh, the book is not about Michigan. Let's make it crystal clear. Mm -hmm. This book is about human behavior, human attitudes, and self-mastery. That's mm -hmm. where we're trying to go. So when you ask that question, it opens up the door to what's the difference between these characters that you describe yes. who are high-performance, peak performers, and the rest of us? Mm -hmm. Well, hungry is the first word that has to come out of your mouth. But then you add hungry and humble. That's what makes them different. These guys are hungrier than everybody you know, and they want it. They want it desperately. But they were humble enough to be coachable. That's what makes you coachable. Some humility where you can, where the ego can be surrendered mm -hmm. and allow someone else to give you advice, input, support, boom, boom, boom. Asking for help, that's not what the average person does. And Desmond Howard, Desmond Howard isn't sent to my office because he's in trouble or creating any problems. He, he raises his hand and says, can we talk? 
I said, okay, we can talk. Des, Desmond Howard studied me for a year and a half before he even talked to me. Is that right? Man, that's the most fascinating story I, I ever get to tell. Uh, Desmond approaches me after a summer camp. I just got through speaking to 900 high schoolers or something. Right. And he pulls me aside and says, can we talk? I said, sure. And he's telling me how he's not happy. He's telling me how, you know, this this opportunity isn't working out the way he thought it would and that he was a running back in high school and now they're making him a wide receiver and they're not even playing him. And, you know, he's got people interested elsewhere. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, so you're looking for a geographical cure. What? I said, so you think that the guys that are recruiting you like we recruited you are going to, like, what, be different from the guys here, from the coaches here? I said, well, I'll tell you what, Des, I don't know you, and, and, and if you say you were that guy in high school, I believe you. This ain't high school. Nobody cares if you leave. You haven't done anything. You were. <laughs> so it's, I think it's like July. <laughs> I said, so if you're going somewhere else, there are no scholarships. Right. It's, yeah, your timing is really whacked out. In addition to that, if you're serious, you need to demonstrate that you are the guy. That's all good. You are the <laughs> you are the guy that you say you are here. Well, it just sounds like as well, uh, Greg Harden here on the Rich Eisen Show, hearing this story, and obviously we know Brady's journey, and I want to get on that in a second. Charles Woodson sat in that chair and told me how uncoachable he really was. And how he had to apologize to Lloyd Carr in order to get back on the field in time for an Ohio State game. He told that whole story and how his mother told him, you go apologize to Lloyd when he refused to apologize to Lloyd. And were you the one who put him on the phone with his mother or that was his position coach who did that? Because he, that was his position coach, right? position coach. So what I'm saying is that it sounds like, do you have to allow yourself to be humbled? If you're not, if humble. it's not your nature, if it's not in order to go to the next level for anyone that's listening yes. to go to the next level, you have to take your humility pills <laughs> twice a day <laughs> mm-hmm. and turn yourself into someone who is so hungry that you know how to arrest your own ego, how to make your ego your ally instead of your enemy and ask your ego, what do we have to do differently? And your ego will say, hey, well, the only thing I got for you is, like, you need to talk to somebody. Mm-hmm. So being able to talk to somebody, uh, Charles was the most human out of all the athletes I've worked with. Yes. The best athlete I've ever seen in my life is Charles Wood. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. I like the gulp you just did, too. Bruh. Charles Woodson, I'd be on the 50-yard line sitting, you know, just chilling and they come out at halftime. We're, I think it was Iowa. We're getting beaten by Iowa. That happens I mean, a lot. And we, it's a, it's, it's an ugly game. Mm-hmm. Charles Woodson walks past me and says, Gee, we got this. Hmm. Gee, we got this. Hmm. But it's Charles. Hmm. But this ain't basketball. You can't, like, go out and score 20 points. Right. I mean, you're on defense. The look in his face, the body language, the whole nine yards says, <laughs> we're not losing this game. Who can decide at a football game on defense that we're not going to lose the game? Charles Woodson. <laughs> Charles Woodson. <laughs> right. But like I said, he seemed to be – he, he had to be humbled, and then he said like the rest was history once he did play in that game against Ohio State, that he apologized to Lloyd, you know, took – the hard coaching, whether he thought it was warranted or not. I got Greg Harden here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, so were you there when Brady was going through the Drew Henson stuff? That That is the beginning of a journey where, where and you were, were you counseling him when he was going through that? The thing that ever happened to, to Tom Brady was Drew Henson. Why is that? Because uh, it became clear to him that uh, – i tell you this. So Sports Illustrated called me one time and says, we're doing a story with Drew Henson. Drew Henson is one of the greatest kids you ever meet in your life. No doubt. 
And so insanely he, talented at the prep level in Michigan. He did everything. Mm, and he says, uh, and they say, we want to talk to you about Tom Brady and, and Drew Henson. I said, mm-hmm. I'm still working at Michigan. So clearly you're not thinking this through. That's right. <laughs> right. So like, I will not be talking about that, but I tell you what, you can quote me on this. Drew Henson was Superman. Mm-hmm. Tom Brady was Batman. Batman always thinks he can whip Superman's ass. <laughs> ah. <laughs> you understand? Mm-hmm. He always got a little kryptonite in his <laughs> pouch. Mm-hmm. So the work that we had to do, why was Tom Brady drafted 199th pick? Well, if he's that good, why is he sharing the limelight with a, a freshman? Correct. Uh, <laughs> If I'm a scout, if I'm the general manager, I'm saying, yeah, okay, he's nice, but he had to share his senior year with another guy, and he must not be that good. Mm -hmm. Look, the mindset of a Tom Brady is the only thing that got him through all that. He was heartbroken, overwhelmed by all all of this. And you'll hear me say it, uh, and you've heard me say it before. When Tom Brady was in my office, I shared with anyone I worked with, you come in my office, you can cry, you can complain, you can do whatever you need to do. You can, you can vent. But when you walk out this office, nobody's to see you sweat. You're to walk in and you're to take charge and be in control of what you can control. You can't control how these coaches are making decisions. Mm -hmm. That's not your role. Your role is to be consistent. Single most important word in sports, consistency. If I asked you the single most important word sports in sports to anyone in this room, they would say A, B, C, or D. But if they don't understand consistency, every word they come up with, we can put consistently win. Well, I consistently mean, boom, boom, boom. Brady is the king of consistency. It's just that he was consistent at the most insanely high level that we've maybe seen on a football field. And I know I'm talking about Jerry Rice and Jim Brown here too. Okay. I know. I know. He's in that, he's in that pantheon. He's placed himself in that pantheon. But once upon a time, he was a kid coming into your office saying, why do I got to share time? So when you said the best thing to happen to Tom Brady is Drew Henson, why do you say that? Because it triggered and took it to the whole nother level. His mental game is the game. The mental game is the game for anyone that's listening. Anyone that wants to read this book, self mastery is what I teach. I can't teach Tom Brady how to do anything on the football field except master his own mind be that guy who is committed to leading as best he can other men. You understand? Mm -hmm. And so he trained himself to be so disciplined that no matter what happened, no matter what the decision the coaches made, he was going to be steadfast in his quest to be the best. So when you see him trotting on the field for Drew Bledsoe and you see the conversation when Bledsoe was coming back, that Belichick was like, what do I do? Do I go with Brady? Do I go with Bledsoe? And then that happened again after the AFC Championship game that Bledsoe won while Brady got hurt. What were you thinking? Were you sitting there, Greg Hardy? <laughs> I'm thinking they have no idea <laughs> what they're about to get. But most of, let's go all the way to recent, current time. Please. Let's go to 28-3 to three at halftime in the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Wait, 20, in the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. two best teams in the world. Mm-hmm. Now, you know 28-3 to three at halftime in a Super Bowl, it really is over. And you know you're only watching because you love Michigan and you love Tom Brady and you're out of respect. <laughs> well, he's a Patriot fan over there, so I'm sure you're very invested in what the story is about right. to unfold here, Chris. But it's just think about it. It's 28-3. Yeah. to three. Yeah, it's Yes. Over. It's over. All they have to do is be consistent, but they weren't. They had decided it was over, too. The team they were playing had decided it's done. And Brady is sitting on the sideline, towel over his head, anticipating, I'm going to get back in the game. At no point is he thinking it's over. At no point can his mind comprehend the loss. Until it's a loss, it ain't a loss to him. This guy is determined to give you 100%, 100% of the time, Win, lose, or draw. That's the most important lesson I've taught anyone that will listen to me. What we talked about 
in my office when Tom Brady was coming to see me is to give 100%, 100% of the time. That's the toughest lesson I'm going to give you. But the, wait a minute. Win, lose, or draw? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Until you understand win, lose, or draw. And you have seen him lose a game, but you never saw him quit. Never. <laughs> so, uh, just again, just to put a fine point on this, um, did you s- save Brady from quitting, essentially? Well, help or help save? Obviously, he's got to make the decision himself, Greg. Check him out. What? You know, I, you know me. You already know me. No, I know. I'm not going to say I saved him. I know that, but you I, helped. But you helped. Bro, you're not gonna, we're not allowing anybody. Mm-hmm. My self-worth and self-esteem is not based on your decision-making. How I feel about me is what I'm teaching. Yes. You've got to decide. Once you can teach a person, if I can teach Rich Eisen. Yes, sir. You've got to decide with or without this environment, your life is going to be amazing. Huh? How do you tell a 19-year-old Tom Brady, you've got to decide with or without football, your life is going to be amazing. Once you make that decision, football becomes what you do, not who you are. No, and I, and I understand I put myself in a position of interviewing you, putting you in a position where you would take credit for something, and I know that was a mistake. So I'm going to come in a different direction. Yes, sir. Seeing what Brady become became, was there a part of a moment in your office where it could have gone in a different direction if he didn't find that reserve himself. Absolutely. Um, Tom allowed me to convince him that his limitations are self-imposed and you must stop putting limitations on yourself. He allowed me to talk about self-mastery and being so confident and so comfortable in the skin you're in that you'll never roll over because somebody else doesn't believe in you. (laughs) And so um, he walks in my office and says, hey, I want to be the starting quarterback. He's just lost 25 pounds from acute appendicitis in an emergency operation. He now looks even worse (laughs) than he did two months ago. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm straightforward. I said, Tom, I can't help you be the starting quarterback, but I can help you understand if nobody else believes in your ass, you'll believe. I said, let's start there. Greg Harden, stay sane in an insane world. How to control the the controllables and thrive afford by the aforementioned Tom Brady. Um, you can get this book August 15th, but pre-order. Go ahead and do that. It is worth your time. Um, and it'll help you if it's something that uh, you feel you need help on. Uh, Greg, let's do this more often. Whenever you're in Los Angeles, you got a spot here. Look, I'm so excited to have a chance to talk to you. I've watched your whole career. I've watched you ebb and flow and grow and grow and grow. Thanks. Get bigger and, and bigger. <laughs> 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 but no, in all sincerity, I appreciate this time and this opportunity, and I hope that we meet again. Well, we, we certainly will. Um, and uh, thanks for everything that you've done, you know, for uh, for Michigan and for the most importantly the kids that you've seen in all the sports at the uh, the university. For for and I'm glad you took uh, you took that meeting with Bo <laughs> there from Ypsilanti going up the road. Thank you, sir. You bet, Greg Harden. Everybody, check out "Stay Sane in an Insane World." August fifteenth is when it's available. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku Channel, twelve to three Eastern, for free. 